Hello designers, welcome back if you're subscribed and welcome here if you're new. About a year ago, I created a general V-Ray fur tutorial that you guys seem to like. We talked about all the different uses I had in mind for such a versatile widget. There were a lot. One of the most popular uses for V-Ray fur though is creating grass. Realistic grass tends to pack a lot of geometry that can cause ketchup to lag and double the render time. So V-Ray offered a solution to that. The fur widget, which acts very much like a proxy widget. It adds a simple weightless placeholder instead of thousands of blades of grass. The grass itself, though, only shows up when using interactive render, so you can edit it to your liking and then produce a final render with the results you want. This makes the process of landscaping less laggy and very easy to control. So let's jump into SketchUp and see how we can create a realistic patch of grass with just a few minor tweaks. Just make sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe for more videos like this and more. For the sake of demonstration, I have a little planter here from 3D Warehouse and a terrain patch with dirt material. That's not very realistic since no one plants grass in a planter, but let's just ignore that. Here's our awesome little planter with all its awesome little details. And here's the terrain patch, scaled to fit the planter. First step to having a realistic patch of grass is uneven terrain. This mimics an actual garden plot, ready to be planted, and no garden plot is as even as a regular surface in SketchUp. Now that we have all our objects and materials in place, we'll need the V-Ray Objects toolbar to add the fur widget. The surface you'll add the fur or grass to has to be a single group. If it's just plain geometry or a group within a group, you'll notice that the fur icon is faded and unclickable. Select the grouped plane and click the fur widget icon. Once the widget is applied, you'll see that the widget is just a bunch of dotted lines wrapping around the group terrain and nothing else. So bye bye lag! And if you launch the V-Ray Asset Editor, you'll find the widget listed under Geometries. You can also click on the Geometries tab to access it if you have a ton of assets in your scene. Clicking on the arrow button on the right here expands that window to show all the widget's parameters or settings. There's a lot of them, but don't let that scare you. We'll go through them in a bit and you'll see how easy this is. Rename your asset first before doing anything else because it will help you avoid confusion if you have other geometries in your scene. And then let's see what this grass looks like with just the default settings by clicking the interactive render button. Okay, this looks ugly and weird, I know. And I said it will be easy, but not too easy. The second thing we're going to need here is to make the grass look like grass by adding material to it. You can do so by scrolling down to the material rollout and enabling it first. This turns the grass white. Still not realistic, it just looks more like a white cat's fur under magrifier. To add a grass material, I'll first need to add a grass material to my material list. A V-Ray library grass material should do the trick. No need to get fancy here. We only need the diffuse map and maybe a bit of reflection. To assign the material to the grass itself, we just have to go back to the grass's settings and choose the material we we want to add from the drop-down list. There we go, now it looks like the Grinch is green fur under a magnifier. Let's fix that. Taking a look at the parameters, first thing we see is the distribution next to a drop-down list. And the default I have over here is per area. What's meant by area is literally the whole area that the widget covers. V-Ray dis is distributing the strands or, str or stems over this whole area depending on the value chosen. The other option is per face. That just populated the whole planter with stems of grass and the reason behind that is because my chosen surface is somewhat a bumpy terrain so it has a lot of faces all connected together to give me a final surface. So this basically tells V-Ray that you have to distribute the density of stems on each face instead of the whole surface. Now the best distribution type for me is per area. 
and we'll move on to the count and we'll set that to a higher value. Let's just say two for now. You can see that the stems are more in number, but not as thick as a patch of grass. So I'll go back and change it to 20. Oh yes, now that's a thick and full patch of Grinch hairs. We'll come back to the density map, but for now we'll move on to length, which is in inches and the default is four, so about 10 centimeters of length. Thickness is 0.12 and it's also in inches. That's the main culprit for the Grinch hair look. I'll just add a zero here and we'll see how that looks. Ah, now it's like, um, it's more of a planter of wispy green kunafa. <laughs> the stems need to be a tad thicker. 0.09 should do the trick. Nope, Grinch hair again. 0.06 looks like a nice even number. See, it's all about trial and error here. And what I prefer may not be preferred by others. But I think we can all agree that this is neither Grinch hair nor green kunafa plants. As for the taper value, it controls how much the stem tapers at the top. 0.9 is the perfect value for what we're trying to achieve here, so we'll leave it at that. Gravity is basically how much effect gravity has on the stems. Setting it to zero will kind of get the point across. Zero is basically neutral in this case. I'll set it to minus one since grass is pretty light and gravity doesn't have much pull on it. As for bend, which is kind of related to gravity, is basically how elastic are the strands or stems. So I'll set the value to 0.8 since grass is a bit on the droopy side. Next we have the global scale and since the grass is usually scaled properly for the most part, we'll just leave it as one. Knots is basically the amount of connected strands or stems. Moving all the way to the left makes the strands appear more apart while moving it all the way to the right makes the strands appear more grouped or closer together. Grass stems are usually neither all grouped nor all apart, so I'll set the value at 8, which is somewhere in between. The rest of this rollout, which are variants and curl, are not really important if you're still discovering V-Rafer and creating grass. I'll link a more in-depth tutorial in the description by TN3D, which you can check out. It's so detailed. As for the level of detail, that's for later on in this video. Just stay tuned. Now that we have all the basics down, let's dive deeper into making this looking realistic. See all these maps here on the side? Some of them are pretty nifty when creating grass, but the ones we'll focus on in this video are the length map and the distribution map. When you look at the grass we just created, it looks a bit too perfect. All the strands are the same size and the whole surface is covered in grass evenly. That's not very realistic now, is it? To fix that, let's start with making a bit of variation in the strand length by adding in a length map. To do that, just click on the texture slot and we'll pick a texture from the list. Nothing too fancy or complicated here. I usually either go for a, the noise A texture or the smoke texture. So for this tutorial and for the length, I'll go with the noise A texture. You can immediately see the difference it makes. If you don't want to mess around too much with it, you can leave it as it is. But I never leave anything as it is, so I tweak it a bit to suit my needs. The length map is very similar to a bump map. It works using black, white, and grayscale values. Black will mean that a strand has no length, while white is a strand at full length. Grayscale values mean that the strands are at varying lengths between no and, in this case, four inches. 
So based on that interpretation, I chose a darker gray color as the starting point and left the white as it is. By tweaking the amplitude and the frequency, try to reach a result that you like because there is no right and wrong here, as I said, just personal preference and scene requirements. And here is a comparison of with a map and without a map. For our second and final map, the density map. It's basically the same with color values, black, white, and grayscale. I usually go for a smoke texture for a subtle density change. Or go for a noise map copied over from the links map and changing the type to infl inflected perlin. I think it's what it's called, and enabling the inflection option for another subtle effect. No one wants a dying patch of grass unless that's what they're aiming for. Just keep in mind that for shorter strang length, these effects won't be so subtle. Now for a bonus tip. I'll just set the scene real quick so we can have a larger grass patch. A few moments later. If you have a similar or larger grass patch and you need it to render quicker, all you have to do is navigate to the parameters again and scroll down to the level of detail rollout and enable it. This will lower the amount of detail that needs to be picked up by the camera starting at a certain distance. Careful with your values since they are in inches too. Ignore the rate and just tweak the start distance as you see fit. It doesn't really affect the quality of the grass as much as it affects the render time. As you can see, the grass still looks good. Now that's it for today's video. If you have any requests or suggestions, you can drop them in the comments below because I read and reply to every single comment. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching and stay safe.